Greetings everyone. Today I'm going to show you a old school technique. It's actually very simple. And I say old school because it's been around for quite some time. Um, we're going to initially start off with just simple HTML and jQuery um, and, and leverage HTML fragments to make reusable web components uh, using those technologies. And then we're going to expand that and leverage ASP.NET Core MVC. Uh, and just showing the newer versions there, but I've actually used this back with .NET Framework on with MVC uh, years and years ago. Um, so let's just to get started, let's say what, what is a HTML fragment, right? So um, I've got a little web page here um, that is nothing more than a fragment, right? And if we view source here on this redbox.html, it's not a full-on HTML page. It's just literally got a div with a little bit of style, the text words redbox, and that's it. So it's not even a full HTML, it's just a fragment, right? So let's say we wanted to reuse that fragment on other parts of our website, right? Uh, so this, this particular page demonstrates that, right? This is a full-on HTML page, but in this case we have jQuery right here loaded up from the Google CDN, as well as a little bit of style I'll come back to in a minute. You remember the red box before was uh, didn't have a size fix, so we're going to override that here on this page. Uh, we're simply creating a wrapper and we're using Ajax to make an Ajax call to that page and we're rendering the contents of that fragment within this div. That's all we're doing. Very simple. And the result is this. So that's pretty powerful in and of itself, but let's take this a step further and work on this with uh, MVC in, in mind, right? So if I wanted to do that, let's just go ahead and quickly create a new MVC project for ASP.NET Core. And really, this, this doesn't have to be a Microsoft technology. You can use this any technology that you can re uh, create fragments and then reuse those fragments, right? With HTML, we've just seen it right there. Now we're going to take it a step further and do MVC. So I'm going to create this one as a shared.webcomponents. Well, we'll keep the default location there. Uh, make it MVC. We don't uh, keep the defaults here and uh, MVC project and click create. Now when this creates, I'm going to uh, do some kind of uh, pre-cooking exercises, so to speak, you know, where they put the uh, item in the oven and instead of waiting for it to cook, they pull out the ready-made version. Uh, I'm going to do that here so you don't have to see me type uh, because that's not really the purpose of this is to see me type. So uh, just in general, I'm going to do a shortcut where I'm going to copy files over here and then we'll look at each one of those files uh, as we do it. So the exact same stuff that was in uh, those sites that we just looked at before, I'm going to drop those into here, right? Uh, and if we look at that, it is a that uh, red box that we looked at before, that same box, and then there's that plain HTML uh, jQuery page, right? The same stuff we just saw before. So let's go ahead and run this in uh, I, uh, MVC, and just to make sure we, this works, right? So when we launch this up, uh, we go to, uh, it loads here, let's make sure it loads, great. Let me go to content slash plain, uh, HTML jQuery page HTML perfect works great same thing okay uh, and just as a side note all of this content will be uh, shared out in my GitHub repository uh, and there'll be a link in the description below uh, so now we got this going let's go ahead and just implement the same red box on our privacy page no big deal right um, so you know the privacy page one of those standard pages here uh, let's just drop it in now, one thing to note is uh, MVC, when they create their project by default, they tend to move the, uh, they or excuse me, place the jQuery at the bottom. Uh, and, and there's reasons to do this, but in this case, we need to move this to the header. So that way it's readily available when we start right away, right? Uh, the, you saw that in our red box example, we're loading that jQuery header here, right, in the header. All right, so no big deal. Let's save everything and launch this up. Uh, and now on our privacy page, we should be able to see that red box, right? All right, great. Perfect. Works great. Okay, now let's take it a little step further and make it a dynamic box. And, and really, let's take make it a dynamic box that's generated from MVC, right? So um, a couple of things. The, the, the first things first is uh, I'm going to drop in. Uh, we want to create a new controller. Um, 
and we're going to do a blank one and uh, we're going to call, call this um, components components controller great okay and I have some a little bit of boilerplate code over here grab my blue box code we're just going to return a partial view no big deal standard MVC right um, so now we also need to go ahead and grab our uh, make a view for that right because we're going to return this as a partial uh, partial HTML section so let's create a section for view so add a folder and you know with the, uh, the magic of uh, uh, I'll paste that one in there and let's just take a look at that simple view blue box view uh, just it's kind of a similar div we had before but in this case we're actually going to put a date time um, there in in this case right so um, pretty pretty straightforward simple um, so now let's go ahead and drop this blue box on our um, home page index right so um, if we go over to our home page and add in a couple of things same as what we did before we have our blue box but in this case just a little fanciness same this is the same as what we've seen everywhere else right um, but now we have this uh, we're calling essentially a, a, a route to get that blue box right um, the, this could be hard-coded but uh, you get the idea that uh, it, it is readily available right there so now let's go ahead and launch this and we should see the blue box on the home page the home index great with the date time perfect okay so let's take this a step further and now let's really take control of our uh, views uh, from the from a masters view standpoint so I want to create a new view uh, uh, called master layout instead of the standard one and I'm just going to copy that into our uh, project here and we'll look at that in just a moment and then uh, we'll edit our startup to use master right. Now, what we're going to do here, though, is we, we want to create this whole complex of reusable components. And in this case, we have a header and a footer. So we're going to take our header and footer, um, and I'll show you this in a moment. And we're going to add those in as new components here. Um, and then also, uh, we're going to take our uh, update our controller. So let's, uh, let's look at the controller first. So what we've done is we've added in a header and a footer, and I need to, so sorry, I need to add in our model. I have a model in this case also. Um, in order to make this uh, a good old, good old demo, uh, we've added a model. So, you know, a model view controller, you may do some processing. You could even require authentication on this header, which I've done in the past. And then based on authentication, you display a different menu to the user based on their uh, security permissions or something of that effect. Uh, in this case, let's just say we, we've looked up our information and we've got our first name and last name readily available here on uh, last login. Let's just say we've got that from a database or something. And then we're going to return that to our partial view to work with if we want to do something with that. Our footer is just simple, just like our blue box. That's what we did before. So now let's look at those. So if you know with the standard layout, MVC, in the header right here, this is header. Within that, this is all your navigation. So let's say we abstract this. And on the footer side, very similar, let's say we abstract everything in the footer, which, you know, says today it says uh, they both say shared components. Uh, down here we have a fixed date. And let's add, change that out. So let's cut those out and make those into our components. So we have a header here. And in this case, this is that same code. Now, because this is MVC Razor Pages, you can actually put in, uh, you know, there's our model we had before. We can work with it. We can actually do some custom coding in here, right? But in this case, I've changed that shared web components to bradhaggins.com, self uh, shameless promo. There's nothing really there, but just to show you it's different. And on the footer, we've changed that to use a, a dynamic date and my website as the footer, right? And if we tie it all together, the new master layout page does nothing more than leverage um, specifying our header and then specifying the footer. Right, and then we're gonna be able to reuse this a little bit later um, again. So now uh, we've got this set up, let's go ahead and look at it and run it, and we should see a different header and footer. Uh, remember, before they looked, they had the words shared dot web components, and now 
Um, they do not. I said Brad Huggins here. And we have my website at the bottom. Right? Great. So now let's say, hey, this is great, Brad. Um, now let's say I want to reuse those components. This header and footer, we've, this is one, one MVC project, and obviously that layout um, uh, you know, is just for this particular project, so to speak. I want to create multiple projects for all of my, my whole organization, and I want them to share these like header and footer or even a menu bar or something to that effect. The beauty of that is, is, is those can be scaled independently, right? This is an independent website. So you can deploy this by itself and then call those via HTTP requests. Uh, you will have to make a, you know, uh, multiple requests, but that you're offloading some of that common functionality, right? Um, to a, 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 a separate application or a separate service, so to speak. So let's go ahead and take a look at that particular example. Let's go ahead and add a new project. Uh, and let's say we're adding literally this is one of our projects, right? So let's just call this project web application. Um, and the goal with this is uh, we're going to same thing, no big deal, MVC project. The goal here is is we're going to uh, use that same layout or some of those shared components, right, from the other site. Um, so first and foremost, let's go ahead and we we know we need to. Uh, uh, whoops, sorry. Um, need to go to uh, the, the the layout page there and we definitely need to uh, change our jQuery up to the header we know that right um, so we can use some of these things uh, and now let's go ahead and let's say on that same home page we will put the blue box again right because um, that was cool we love the blue box blue box is awesome so what we're gonna do here is uh, let me pull up my other sample code so in this case we're going to put in the same code but we're not using dynamic we're going to you know and you can populate this however you want but this is the address of the other site so let's go make sure that's correct so if we go over to the site and i go to debug i'm going to copy this address it's 4382 so that's the essentially the the hosting site for our components right paste that guy in there right we should be good to go. So now, first, let's go ahead and launch our main site because obviously that that's going to have to be running, right? At some point, you know, you're deploying this; it's going to have to accept requests for those common components, right? So while that's you know going on, a second site is going to come online and say we want to use that blue box component. There's something about that; it's just so amazing. We we definitely want to run that on our site too, and uh, we should be able to. Uh, oh, look, we didn't pull that in. Now, if you look. Our debug logs, we do have some errors down here. Oh, cores, bump, bump, bump. Okay, no big deal. This is something, it's, it, and I did this on purpose so I could show you what we need to do to resolve this. So the site hosting this needs to implement um, some cores rules to allow the client to consume it, right? Um, so what we're going to do is in here in the startup, we're just going to add in a little section, and we're going to change that URL in a minute. Um, we need another one down here before our auth. Um, and then I need to create that uh, variable at the top of the page. Um, so if I go up uh, right here, okay. And so what, basically this is just adding a course policy rule that says that client can make requests to the server. So let's go get the client's address. Um, client's address, if we go copy that, um, debug, and we're going to copy it and um, startup so just keep an eye on there's no trailing slash here so we'll have to remove that so let me paste this in so that's the client right so now let's run this again just to show you now it will work um, and then we'll go on to the next final step so if we look at this now we, there's our main page and now let's launch our secondary project that's going to consume that blue box and now the blue box should work successfully perfect and you remember this is still our secondary project right here. So now let's say, hey, you know what? Great, Brad. Now let's we want to use the same header and footer for our secondary project. So we have this common look and feel across our entire organization. You know, the key with that too is you need to have something in there that's going to be very static. That that's your wrapper, right? So that means that layout page needs to be, I mean, almost as static as possible because that'll be what you'll share throughout the organization. Um, and, and on top of that, then you can use these shared components. So um, back to our mind magic, uh, let's go back to that uh, secondary project here. Um, 
and I'm going to drop in a shared view master layout like we had before and we'll take a look at this in a moment um, but obviously to get that to work we're going to have to go and in that particular project we're going to update our view start to use that master layout now let's go look at that master layout real quick um, and just before we do that I'm going to go grab the URL of the mass, the site here for uh, uh, for our shared components because we're going to need that on our, our uh, to make sure they're on our master layout so again this is super simple you know we have basic just simple style sheet stuff these could come from your CDN instead of a the local file system they sh these probably should come from a global source or for your organization right and then you may have some site specific um, style there that you're running uh, for this particular application uh, as well as your site specific JavaScript right but on top of that we're, we're really just using the same thing we have a header here and we're gonna hydrate it with this jQuery uh, in uh, Ajax so let's paste in our uh, correct address here this is a standard MVC body you know that's the part that the application should be controlling and displaying and lastly your footer uh, where you'd have and then we'd hydrate the footer with uh, Ajax jQuery and so let's replace that URL All right remember before this site said uh, you know project web application as uh, the site title so now this will have a different title right because we're running this as our master layout so first project first uh, this is our master you know the uh, web components projects running in the background we're going to accept requests for our headers and footers right this is our new header and footer we've customized now we're going to go ahead and launch our second there second website here and we've we've implemented a standardized layout but that's also going to um, be used and there we have it and this is that second address so we have two addresses here we have that's the main site 82 right and then uh, this is our second site the the 15 very cool this is getting rendered on the other server and the HTML is getting pulled into here interesting thing a couple of things when again when you view source on these it's just what we saw there so you're, you're not seeing the context of what's in here or, uh, or what's in the header for example as well right that's not getting displayed it's on uh, runtime. Um, secondly, too, um, it's also worth pointing out that um, there is a, a something to be said about the shared layout. So I don't know if you've noticed, but it, there is a slight delay, and that's because of the style and the layout here. So some of those things should be kept to the layout, and some things should not uh, should be uh, provided on the control side. So there's some there's going to be some issues that you'll have to work through regarding <clears throat> where things should live I keep it as simple as possible keep layout to be exactly that fix the layout control the layout have that be the standard piece after layout is standardized then you can take the pieces of that and fill them in with whatever components you want right and that's what we've done here in this particular example um, I hope you've enjoyed this particular exercise uh, it's it's fairly simple, but you can see how this amazing complexity uh, uh, that you can create from these shared components. Now, just one last thing is these could be completely separate projects. I put them in this one solution just for demonstration purposes, but realistically, they would be totally independent and just calling these other components. Um, so I, I hope that's that's really opened some eyes. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Put a comment, uh, like the video if you like it. Um, but otherwise, uh, thanks for watching.